Before we can get started building our AI, we need to create a dedicated character for the AI to control. We also need to explicitly define the way in which the AI will exert this control over the character. To do this, we need to create two new blueprints, a character blueprint derived from the player character and an AI controller blueprint. We will then configure these such that the AI controller automatically possesses the AI character when we start the game. Let's start by taking a quick look at the third person character as used by the player character, as it will form the basis of our AI character as well. Begin by selecting the third person character in the viewport and then move up to the right hand side in the world outliner and right click on the selected asset and click browse to asset. This will highlight the asset in the content browser at the bottom of the screen where we can double click and open it. When we first open this blueprint, we'll be taken to the event graph. And if we look at the graph, we can see that everything in here is to do with handling player input. Naturally, our AI doesn't need to handle any player input, so let's not worry about what's in here too much. We'll move straight on to the important components that build up this blueprint. To help us visualize these components, let's move to the viewport tab and take a closer look. Now we can move to the components panel in the top left corner and select the capsule component. As we can see, this is a capsule shape that defines the collision volume used by this character. This component is used for the collision information and at the very least means our AI won't be able to walk through walls or simply drop through the floor. Next, we have the skeletal mesh component. This defines the skeletal mesh used by the AI as well as the materials and the animations themselves. Next, we have the spring arm component and the camera component. These two work together to control the view of the player when they possess this character. Finally, we have the character movement component. If we move over to the right hand side and look in the details panel, we can see that this has many different configurable options for all the different movement types. For example, walking, jumping, falling, running, even flying. So now we have a rough idea of the components that are present on this character. And we also have a good idea of which will be relevant for an AI and which will not. With that in mind, let's go ahead and start building our own AI character using this existing asset as a basis. Ensure that the third person character is selected in the content browser, right click and select duplicate. Name this new asset AI underscore third person character. Once that's done, double click to open the new asset. We'll begin by clearing out anything we don't need as this is an AI character. We can start by selecting everything in the event graph by left clicking and drawing a marquee around it and hitting delete. We can press F7 to compile and ensure that we have no errors from deleting that content. Next, we have a number of variables that are related to player input that we also do not need anymore. Coming over to the My Blueprint panel on the left, we can select Base Turn Rate and hit delete on the keyboard and select Base Lookup Rate and once again hit delete on the keyboard. We can press F7 to compile and again confirm that everything is still working. Next, we can remove the spring arm and the camera components that we don't need any longer. As it's an AI character, the AI doesn't need a camera attached to it. So select the camera boom and press delete and select the follow camera and press delete on the keyboard. Once again, press F7 on the keyboard to compile to ensure that everything is still working. Once that's done, we can save this new blueprint and close the blueprint editor. Next, we need to add an AI controller to replace all of that player controller functionality we just removed. Right click in an empty space within the content browser and select blueprint class. From this dialog box, move to the bottom and expand the all classes rollout. In the search box, begin typing AI controller until it's visible. When you can see AI controller, left click to select it and then hit the select button in the bottom right of the dialog box. Name this asset AIC underscore third person character. The AIC prefix is a standard naming convention, meaning AI controller. This makes it easier to recognize the asset when we start adding more and more content to our project. Open our existing AI third person character from the content browser. On the right hand side in the details panel in the pawn rollout section, Find AI controller class and expand the rollout. From the drop down, select AI third person character. Press F7 to compile the blueprint and ensure there are no errors, and press Ctrl S to save this blueprint before closing the blueprint editor. Let's finish up 
by placing our newly created AI third person character into the level and seeing what happens. Drag the new AI character from the content browser into the viewport, and this will add the character to the scene. Then press the play button at the top of the toolbar and click the viewport to take control of the player character. Now, if we move the player character over, we can see the AI character. Obviously at the moment they don't do anything, but note what they have inherited from our existing character. They have an animation and they have collision. We can't walk through them. And this will be the foundation upon which we can build the rest of our AI character. In this video, we created a new character blueprint for our AI using the existing player character as the starting point. We then created a new AI controller blueprint and configured our AI character to use it. We did this so that we have a dedicated character for our AI to control distinct from the player character.